one of the things we want to drive home today as sort of the marketing takeaway is your blog is a central core piece of your branded media. And in order for it to work effectively for you, you need to treat it like a content command center. And by that, I mean that most folks, they start a blog and they're excited about it in the beginning and they write one or two posts and then the third and fourth start to fade away. And then by week three or four or five, they're sort of looking at it as an afterthought. Content is what is what drives web traffic. And, and that content can come from a variety of things. It can be video, it can be a podcast, it can be written content uh, with pictures, it can be all kind of different things. No longer do you have to be AAA plumbing as an example to come up first in the yellow pages under plumbing. If you just put out this variety of content, you, you start to be noticed by Google uh, much closer. There's a few things you can do, like you can invite guest bloggers. We have two or three of those at uh, the Urbane Life, as, a, as an example, who do guest blogging for us. So you don't always have to pay for your content. And once your digital footprint becomes large enough, people will blog for you just to get the exposure. As a matter of fact, one of the, the great, greatest sort of new media stories of our time uh, with the Huffington Post, I think something like over 40% of their content the writers do for free just because she has such a large platform. A couple of must-haves on your blog is you want to have a follow us on Twitter badge and you also want to have a Facebook like. And then you also want to have the, the toolbar that allows folks to submit the article directly to like StumbleUpon uh, or Reddit. Dig, not so much unless you have a tech blog of some sort. So most, most department communities have lifestyle blogs, so, so that's um, more appropriate for things like StumbleUpon and Reddit. And by the way, too, you can have the best content in the world. That doesn't mean anybody's going to read it. Like anything, you have to market that. You have to publish it on Twitter, um, publish it through your Facebook page. Uh, LinkedIn is another great place to publish your stuff that works really well. YouTube videos, there are great ways to, to market your content. And you can either have those done you know, professionally or, or you can shoot some of them yourself. But you want to identify, organize, and share your content. And you want to make your content shareable. What you really want to do too is turn this over to some of your employees, whoever in your company may be passionate about it, and get them to participate. I think something that sometimes stifles companies is they, they want to put a lot of rules around it. I'm not sure you need a lot of rules. For the most part, our folks on the front line, they know what to do. Just don't embarrass us. That's what I tell our, our team. And if they do do something wrong, you can always take it down pretty quickly. Your digital footprint becomes an asset. And if you keep after this long enough, the size of your digital footprint tends to start to attract other folks who are interested in you. And we talk a lot about partnership marketing on our blog at the Urbane Way, but I just want to touch on a couple things that has happened to us in the past uh, six or eight months. We started down the path with a company called Dining in the D. They were doing a TV series on the local PBS channel, and they asked us to cover some of their articles. And we ended up negotiating an agreement with them, and we became media partners. And what was pretty cool about that was we all of a sudden had access to about 55 or 60 local chefs and restaurant owners. And it was, it was a great thing because it was a true alignment of our brands in that, you know, our, most of our, our residents uh, dine out frequently, so they enjoy the articles we did. And then the size of our digital footprint also helped dining in the D. So when you can bring um, partnership marketing together and align brands, it, it's, uh, it, it works well for both parties. We also just became a media partner with a local festival here uh, in Royal Oak, Arts, Beats, and Eats, and they have about a half a million 
People come to that. It's a pretty, pretty big deal here locally. We're going to write articles about them. We're sponsoring one of the entrances. So we have be able to get our, our name out there in sort of traditional banner style over, over these entrances. And so the point I'm trying to make is a lot of times people in social media want to say it's not about the it's not about the numbers, it's about the engagement. All of that's very true. However, it is about the numbers because if your Facebook page only has a few hundred fans, you need to do something about that and fix it. You need a few thousand. Frankly, larger apartment operators that aren't in the tens of thousands should be embarrassed uh, and they should fix that problem. But until they look at digital marketing as being important, they're not going to fix it. You should have tens of thousands of Twitter followers, not a few hundred. If you are operating in Kansas City, you don't necessarily want folks from New Hampshire. You want people from Kansas City. But there are ways um, that you can do that with the searches today um, through TweetDeck and, and different, um, different applications that you can geo-target your, your friends and, and followers. So that's all we have for today, but uh, we appreciate you coming and um, thanks for watching the series.